Hi there, my name is Jordan Tash, and of course developer over at Code for Kids, and welcome to another teacher video in JavaScript 2, Test the Builder. Just like lesson one, we're going to be looking at how tests can build more cities, but now we're going to be taking into account city metrics, such as pollution, electricity, money, and population. All right, so now that we're inside the lesson, let me just chat a bit about uh, OOP again and exactly what we're going through in this lesson. So the learning outcomes again, OOP, a bunch of different JavaScript uh, concepts that you've seen already, but now we're taking into account different metrics that correspond to each object. And these different metrics are explained right here. So on the first tab, test the builder number one, who is test the builder? In the previous lesson, you learned how to simply place city objects. Remember, we at the end of the lesson, we made a whole entire city with, with different types of energy buildings and population and nature and trees and all those things. Um, but now, Tess needs to keep in mind how each building affects the city. So whatever she places, we're going to have four different metrics that can change. Uh, the first is population. Then we have money, electricity, and finally, pollution. So now in this lesson, we're gonna to have to take into account how all those different metrics affect the city. And we do so by uh, chatting to the mayor and the mayor is gonna ask Tess the builder to, to make these cities. So the first city object, as we've seen uh, in the previous lesson is nature. And you remember nature, we had a whole, different a whole bunch of different trees. So the example I give you here is the pine small tree. And now you'll see that this object has a number of characteristics. It has population, money, electricity, and pollution. So if you place a small pine tree, uh, the population of the city won't change. It will, however, cost a bit of money to build. Uh, the electricity will not go up or down, and the pollution will be uh, reduced by 10. So it's nice to have a tree, obviously, because we, we want less pollution. So in Test the Builder, what do trees do? Decreases pollution. You'll get that correct answer. Next, we have population. Just like before, the tree object changed a bunch of different metrics. Population does exactly the same. Again, we have these teacher prompts. So if you're a teacher, you can talk to your class. If you're a student, you can try and answer this by yourself. So here we have a population.house. Okay, we saw houses in the previous lesson as well. If you add a house to your city, your population will increase by 500. It will cost 100 to make. Your electricity will reduce by five, because obviously if you have a house in a city, it will consume electricity. People are watching TV, you know, using kitchen appliances, etc., and the pollution will not change. So in Tesla Builder, what do population, uh, population buildings do? Increases pollution, decreases money, okay? Consume electricity, increase population. Next, we have energy. And energy, uh, the whole the whole thing about energy is that it increases pollution. That's the main thing it does. So a coal plant doesn't change population, costs quite a bit to make, 400 to make, um, adds a lot of electricity to the town, which can power all those different uh, population buildings. And it increases the pollution, however, as a trade-off. So what do energy buildings do? Produce electricity, decrease pollution. No, it increases pollution. Produce electricity, increase pollution. That sounds correct. And there we go. And now, just as before, how does test place those objects? We saw this in the whole of the first lesson. Place object, the type of object, and then the name of the object. In this case, small. Just like before, uh, you can try and match the pattern just as a recap of lesson one uh, of test the builder. So match the given pattern. We've done the first two trees for you. Then she's got to add a house. She's got to turn right, go down a few times and add these three additional tiles. You remember in the code, we can see what objects we have to use uh, by these over here. So this is the type and this is the name, just as type name. See nature corresponds there, name corresponds there. You can same with population house. So let's go into a bit more depth now. The mayor has asked Tess to complete goals to make her, uh, their city one of a kind. We complete these goals by placing those objects. As I said, different buildings change different stats. If the mayor asks us to reduce pollution, what object type would we place? So reduce pollution, the only thing that can do that is a nature object or a tree. And there we go. So a little bit more about the theory of objects and OOP. So Tess uses JavaScript objects to place objects down the city. And it's uh, a JavaScript object is any object that has properties. Remember, we spoke about um, a student in the first lesson. A student can have a whole bunch of different properties, um, such as age, height, 
name, uh, grade, etc. So here is a JavaScript car object. So we have a car, brand is Tesla, model is three, wheels four, it's an electric car, and the color is red. So there's the type, and there's a bunch of characteristics, well, there's the object, sorry, there's a bunch of characteristics of that object. Can we name the object car anything we want? Yes, we can, it doesn't matter. It's just like functions. We can name a function anything we want, but we should. it should be related to what the object actually is. In this case, we have a Tesla, so it's obviously a car, so we would name our car uh, car. So we'll name the object car, not Tesla. Uh, so yeah, uh, objects can be named anything we want. So now this is interesting. So to get these properties, we want to be able to access these properties of an object. So if we want the brand of a car, what we do is we say car.brand, okay? If we want the color of the car, we say car.color. Just like we said place object nature dot first, uh, fir tree. We use the dot uh, syntax to get the, those characteristics. So again, energy dot coal plant will give us the coal plant. So what is the value of car.brand plus car.model? So car.brand is Tesla and car.model um, is three. So Tesla plus three, you just put them together, Tesla three. Makes the most sense, right? And there we go. Okay, and now we're gonna do a bit of mathematics with the JavaScript objects. So this is just basically um, getting the, the value of a JavaScript object. So what is the value of nature? dot fur large dot pollution. So we have nature dot fur large dot pollution. So the value of it is negative 30. Next we have now a little bit getting a bit more complicated. What is the sum of energy dot coal plant dot population? So population um, is zero plus population dot school dot money. So population dot school dot money is 400. So zero plus negative 400, negative 400. I'm not gonna do the last one for you because we're gonna run out of time. But now we're gonna get into exactly what this looks like. And here is what the new interface looks like. So we have a play, we have a reset, and we have all those characteristics, um, as I said, of the city at the top in the toolbar. So that's population. Then we have money, uh, energy, and pollution, okay? And over here on the right, we can see the objectives from the mayor. So the first objective is we need power uh, we, we, we need to power our town. So the energy, which is zero at the moment, needs to equal 40. And to do that, we need to place energy objects. Okay, so the first one's done for you. You can see because of these two coal plants, we have, uh, we have met the criteria of energy being 40 because our energy is 50 at the moment. But we also want our pollution below zero or zero or below. And you can see um, the exclamation mark. That means it's not complete. So what do we need to do? Well, uh, we know that trees reduce pollution. So right now we have 10, we need zero. So let's place a, we only need to do one thing here. Let's place a nature dot fur large again, where we ended off. She's gonna place it and there we go. One additional tree and now the pollution is negative 20. So it's below zero and we've ticked both. If you are stuck, uh, throughout this and I'm going to go through it here on this next tab if you want to see uh, now that we're in the coding tab you can see a lot better if you want to see exactly what characteristics these uh, objects hold we can click this little magnifier icon over here and what this does is it shows us per object on the tile on the grid we can see exactly what pan large does it uh, decreases our money by 200 and decreases our pollution by 20. So if we have multi, if we have two, obviously it costs four hundred and it decreased by minus forty, and you can see that, you can see that over here. So because we started with one hundred as well as the budget, so the first thing we need to do is complete all of the mayor's goals. We need CO two to negative fifty, and we need um, to place eight trees. So get the pollution way down by placing a max of eight trees. So what we need to do is place a bunch of trees. See what that does. Let me just try and get one of them correct just to show. And there we go, we've passed minus 50 and we've got the tick. So now what we need to do is get it to minus 60 to get uh, by placing eight trees to get this final one correct. And again, you can click the magnifier to see if you're stuck. For the second one, uh, we need to place one tree in one house, okay? You can see the objects that you can access over there just like before. And over here, a bit of a harder one, 
We need to keep our budget above zero. We only have 800, so we can't spend more. And we need three houses and 10 trees. So you'll find that you need to write this code in a very specific way uh, to get those exact objectives complete. And then we have the final one, carbon neutral. We have a number of objectives, we have four. The first is to get the CO2 to zero. Then we need to get the energy to 100 or above, the population to 2000, and the money to zero. So we just need to have enough money left. So that's it for lesson two. We really hope you enjoyed. Um, if you want to and you feel confident enough, uh, you can leave now or you can continue watching because I'm going to go through the final tab solution, which is the hardest tab. Uh, so let's go through it. I've got the code uh, copied and ready. So this is what it's going to look like. Not too bad. I've only added, what is that, 46 to 66, only 20 lines of code. So let's just go through this without it first. The best way to, to test uh, the tab before uh, answering all the objectives is to just to click play, see what code is there already. So test places a whole row of houses. That's perfect. And you can see that we've actually ticked uh, three of the four objectives already. So carbon neutral, the CO2 is zero below. Right now it's zero. Uh, moving in, population is 2000. Perfect, we've just hit 2000. And then budget control, we got 1600 still. We over zero, which is perfect. But we don't have uh, any energy. We need 100 energy and we're in deficit, energy deficit. We have minus 20 energy. So let's fix that. Let's, let's add some energy. So the first thing we do is I actually want to put all the coal plants at the bottom, all the way away from the houses. I don't want my, my population to be close to those nasty coal plants. So let me uh, add some houses, then I move, 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 turn right, add those coal plants, and then add three trees. Um, and I actually haven't, this is actually isn't correct, so let's just fix it. So now um, I've added houses, I've added coal plants, I've added trees, and we actually need one more tree, it looks like. Is that correct? Yes, yes we do. Um, we need one more tree. And let's place the tree above the first house. So I think it was facing upwards. So we need to move again and then place objects. Okay, so she should add the first, the first row of houses, go to the bottom, add the coal plant, turn right, and then add a full column of trees and skip that one. There we go, perfect. And that's all four ticks and we've done. We've done this tab. So let's just go through it super carefully again. This code on the left over here was given to you already. Then what I wanted to do, test was over here uh, in the last column of the second row. And I wanted to test to go down to the bottom to add the coal plants because I wanted the coal plants away from the houses. So I moved it to the bottom by saying, turn right, move, 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 move. And then I turned right again to face the correct direction on the bottom row. And then I placed uh, a few energy coal plants, which is just that code. Then I moved again, turned her right again. So now she was facing upwards, going towards the houses. And then I wanted her to place a column of trees and that was the trees uh, to get the carbon neutral objective done. So let me just reset it, show you exactly how it works again. I could run through. And while that test is running, uh, I just wanna say thank you for watching and really hope you enjoyed lesson two and I'll see you until the third one. And there's your solution right there.